Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Today we're back at our basics terminal here and we're going to do a bit more of our MIPS programming. Now last time we were, looked at our logic readers and logic writers and how we could actually program them using MIPS coding to code them into an IC circuit to make the circuit do the same things that they do. Now today we're going to have a look at it, the functions of our logic processor. Logic processor comes in a number of different flavours, ranging from your selects, your maths, your max mins, and compare units. They all operate in a very similar way, so we should be able to knock them off pretty quickly. Last time we were here, we, we just read a number from the dial with a logic reader and use a logic writer to write onto a display. That is what we, you will want to do from time to time, but more often than not, you're going to want to take a value from an item compare it with some sort of a trigger in order to activate another device for whatever reason. So today I've set up a basic circuit to emulate that. So I've got a dial hooked up to a logic reader. So the logic reader of course is going to read the value from the dial. I've then got a compare unit. Now the compare unit will compare the input from the logic reader with another value which I've got set into the memory which is just a 5 at the moment and it will do whatever the function is. You've got functions of greater than, less than, than, equal to, or not equal to. So, they're the ones we've got there, and they will just do different things based on whatever that is. So the output of that then gets fed to the logic writer, which then gets sent to the light I've got over here. Now, we've got it set to less, when it's less than 5, so my dial being set now 8, it's not less than 5. If I turn it down to a 4, which is less than 5, will then activate the dial. So this is the sort of thing you'd have if you were wanting to switch on a heater, you would have a temperature dial, a temperature gauge, and, uh, and whatever temperature you want the heater to come on and off at. So it, it is a practical thing that you will use with a lot of your things there. Um, so we will need to read We'll need a command to read from the dial to be the same as last time, which is our load command. Load command will place the value into our register. You can think of the cable as being the register. And we take another value as well. We can use another value from another device, but we're just using a number, which must be a constant this time. And then we use our compare command, which then goes into another register, which gets sent off to the write command, and goes into the light to activate the device. Um, right, so the commands we use to replace the compare unit. If we go into the station is wiki, type in MIPS, we get the language. We will find that our comparison values are in the table down the bottom. These are the ones that they're our S commands. They are a set register. You find there's a few of them there. But the different commands just respond to different conditions. So you're setting if it's equal to, if it's equal to zero, greater than or equal to. So it's just GE for greater than or equal to, greater than, equal to zero, greater than, greater than zero, less than or equal to. So they say follow a pattern there. So although there's a few of them there, don't be too worried about it. Once you get the hang of one of them, you'll be right with the other ones. So, and our IC chip, we still have our dial, our display set up. I do have a light there as well, so I'll just add that onto the, onto the chip as well. Uh, there it is. So that will be connected to D2. If we remember from last time, we've aliased our dial to device 0, our display to D1. So now we have to alias our light to D2, because it's hooked to pin D2. Now our code from last time, we just use our load command to load the setting from the dial into R0 and save straight away into the display R0. Now we find that our, our commands typically take the same sort of format. We have our command, where we want the result to go, and then the rest of the command that we're using. So for a load one, we're loading a device, we're loading from a device into a register. So the destination is the register, that's our, our first um, field there. And then we're loading from the dial the setting value. 
when we're saving the destination this time is the device. So we're saving it to the dis display, the setting value in the display, and we're saving the value R0. Now I'm just, I haven't named my temporary variable in this one, so I'm just sticking with R0. Now we'll use those same two commands there because we still want to read from the dial. We can get rid of the display one there, but we'll just keep it so we can see what the dial is saying. So from there, we want to set, set another variable, or we can just reuse R0 if we want. Because uh, remember, we do only have 16 registers there to play with, so sooner or later you're going to have to start reload, reusing them. So if, if we want to switch on a light at a certain stage, to switch on it, once again, it comes back to knowing your devices. Your light has an on-off. It has an, has an on-off value. Well, it actually has an on value, not an off value. Switch it on, on goes to 1. Switch it off, on goes to 0. So when you want to switch on the light, you just got to ask yourself the question is, when do I want it to come on? It sounds a very simple thing to do, but if you want to switch the light off, you don't want to go thinking, when do I switch the light off? Because a true answer to that will give you a 1, which will switch it on. So when you're when you're setting up your queries, you want to ask a question that will give you a true vol, true answer. So then you can just feed that answer straight into the light, and when the answer is true, it'll come on. When the answer is false, it'll come off. It's just a way of thinking. It's not necessarily right or wrong. It is just a bit of an easier way to do it, though. So once you get your head into the right spot for thinking, the way, way to think, like the light thinks, be the light and it will make your programming a lot easier. Once again, it just comes back to knowing your devices. So we're thinking, when do we want the light to come on? Well, I'll just pick any value there, like we had with the other one there. I want the light to come on when the value is less than five. So we have to set our variable with an S when it is less than LT. So set less than, our destination comes first. So I'm gonna put I'm going to write it back into R0. So whatever R0 was, I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to write over the top of it. So I'm going to set less than. We're going to save it into R0. So the question is, when the current value of R0 is less than our constant, which was 5. So that's all it is. If R0 is less than 5, set R0 to true or false. So from there, I have a true or false which is to when the light goes on. If it's a true, the light goes on, one, I can write that straight to the on value of the light. So we can save our destination. Is the light the on value of the, of the device? And we're just saving R0 back into it. And that's all there is to it. So if I confirm that, export it. 9 is not less than 5, that's where it currently is, the light is off. If I can get the end here, we can see it all. I turn it down, 8, 7, 6, 5 is equal to, but not less than. 4 is less than, on it comes. 5, it switches back off again. So I don't have to write an off command, I just need to say when do I want it on. When that condition is not true, it'll switch the light off. So we've handed our on and off routines, all with the one bit of code. So that's it. Our logic compare chip has been replaced with that command just there. So we set less than R0 is less than 5, true or false. And we pass that true or false on to the light on command. So of course to set any other way, set greater than is it SGT exactly the same format. Nothing changes, but now it'll respond to when the light is greater than, or light will come on when the value is greater than. Export, 6 is greater than 5. Again, turn around, 5 is not greater than 5. So we have a mock-up of our heating and cooling system here. I have a cooler, which won't work, so I haven't got it hooked up to the pipe, but it'll switch on and off to show us what we're doing. I have a heater. And instead of a temperature sensor, I'm just going to input the temperature on a dial. So, because I can change that easier just to show it working. 
Right, so we need to hook them up. We have our dial, we have our heater, and we have our cooler. So here we go, we've alias, alias the dial in, the heater, and the cooler, D0, D1, D2. Now I've also uh, aliased a register, register 1, as temperature, because I will be reusing that a couple of times throughout the code, so it's, it's, it's earned itself a name, because it'll just make it easy to work with. So first up, we need to find out what the temperature is. So we will load our destination for what we want to store is in register R1, which we've called temperature. Now we want to load it from the gas sensor. Well, we're using a dial in this, in this one here. Normally you would load it from a gas sensor and you would load the temperature, but in this example, I'm just using the dial to simulate that. Done, we have our temperature. Now we want to switch on our heater and cooler based on whether or not it's at the right temperature. So we want to ask ourselves, when do we want the heater to come on? Because remember a true value, we'll switch it on. So the question is, when do we want it to come on? The heater will come on when it gets cold. So we'll set our test when it is less than or less than and equal to um, where we want to store the answer. We will store the answer to the destination. We just put it into a temporary variable R1. When do we want to do that? We want to switch it on when the temperature is less than, well, let's say 15. That's potato weather. So make sure we keep it above 15. So that will return a true or false if the temperature is less than. So if it is less than that, true, we want to save that, that setting. Destination is the heater. The, set, the value that we want to set there is the on value. And we pass it either true or false depending on that one there. The heater is switched on. Now when do we want the cooler to come on? when it gets too hot. So we want the whole heater to come on when the temperature is greater than say 25. So we set greater than or greater than or equal to SGE. Both will work. Where do we want the answer to that question to go? We want to store that answer in R0. We've already, we don't, don't need the old value anymore so we just reuse it. And of course, the temperature is when is the temperature less than, or when is, temp when is it greater than 25? So that'll give us a true or false. So we can save that to the cooler, the on value, we store R0. And that's it. We now have five lines of code in there. We are reading from one device and controlling two others based on the reading of that device. So confirm that, we export it, and switch it on. That might help. Now at temperature is three, the heater is on because that's less than 15. As our temperature goes up, the cooler stays off, as the whoops, that's down. As the temperature goes up, as the temperature goes up, you can see once it gets to 15, the heater should switch off. There it is. Then nothing happens until we get to 25, and then the wall cooler comes on because now it's too hot. Once again, as it gets back down to the comfortable temperature, everything switches off again. So there you go. We have an automated heating and cooling system with five lines of code. That beats the hell out of, what is it, eight logic chips? We've replaced eight logic chips with five lines of code. And there we go, we are pretty well versed in using our logic comparators now. So we can now make decisions in our code and pass those decisions onto devices. So what we've got there is still fairly simple, but it does cover a lot of the early programs you're going to want to do. 
So that's step two. Still more steps to go, but that'll do for today. So till next time, happy building. See ya.